already rolling, y'all. What's good with y'all? It's your boy Silver. I'm back again for another Silver View. And happy Sunday to everybody. I think this is the last Sunday of the month. We made it through a very crazy month, but hey, we back again. I'm back for another exclusive talk with a very dope person coming up today. I'm gonna be having Elijah A, AKA EA is in the game. <laughs> this is somebody that's very talented, man. I actually had the luxury of going to school with him back in the day in high school. I'm very happy for everything he has accomplished going on. We talking about photography, y'all. Talking about entrepreneurship. We talking about uh, a future husband, I think father already so we got a lot to talk about today so i want everybody to tap in tell your grandma tell your auntie from down the street to go ahead and watch this real dope so you coming up with the man that came up with one thing that i really want to say is a come up because it's in the name the come up productions so we're going to get ready for this thing i want everybody to go on tap in on me real quick as i get the guests of the show on so uh yeah let's get this cracking hope everybody had a good week If you didn't, no one cares. You better work harder. <laughs> What's going on, man? My boy, what up? What up? Man, I can't call it. I bless. How you feeling out here? All is well. How you been? Man, I good, man. I good. I appreciate you uh, reaching out, man, for this because this is really dope, bro. That means people fucking with me, and I mean, I'm reaching out. So I, I, I really do appreciate that. I'm on it, bro. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt, man. I see what you're doing. It's, it's a blessing, bro. Hell yeah, man. Let me go and get my water break going because I ain't going to lie to you. I'm going to be cotton mouth. <laughs> but for everybody who's going to be tapping in, and for the ones who don't know who I'm talking to already, this is Elijah Alexander, my guy, man. I'm going to call you EA just for short and sweet because, you know, yeah. that's already the... It's in the game, man. That's a dope <laughs> happy thing, bro. I'm going to go ahead and be honest with you, bro. But uh, let's get it cracking, man. I ain't going to hold nobody time. But I do want to just let everybody know that we are going to talk about a lot of stuff. I appreciate the um the the side notes that you gave me. This was the first time I asked a guest for uh right. three things that they would actually like me to talk about. So I do uh, appreciate right. you for that, bro. Uh, no, no, tell no. me, man. Go ahead and tell me. Just give me the the universal question to get this out the way, man. How you been maneuvering through this wrong and shit, bro? Because I know we we seen life before it. How you dealing with it right now, man? And, and just living through it, man. Just been. You feel me? Taking it day by day, doing what I can do. Still trying to get shoots in, you know, with the COVID and distance. But still been yeah. trying to do my photo shoots, still trying to, you know, make ends meet, provide for my family, that kind of route, you know. Standing in the yeah, house, yeah. playing the game, take care of my <laughs> daughter, <laughs> take care of my daughter, you know. Yeah, man, congratulations on the fatherhood, man. Thank you, bro. More life. A, yeah, man, that's more life. That's a beautiful blessing. It's a legacy. You know yeah. what I mean? You know, what's baby girl's name? Her name's Seven. Seven Renee Alexander. That's beautiful, bro. Yeah. Beautiful. You know, the name Seven can't, you know, it's, it's whole, complete. Yep. You know, it's not like, completion. you know. Yep. Me and her mom, we felt like, you know, that was, she completed us. We, she, you know, she made us who we is. Man, that's dope, man. I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. I'm gonna be honest with you. You, you, you dope as fuck with this camera shit, bro. Because, yeah. like, Man, the way that I was watching the YouTube of you and your wife to be, man, going through the uh, natural birth, you had birth. it from day to day, moment to moment. It was beautiful, bro. It was like we was right there watching real reality TV. No scripts. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You brought birth. the real back to reality TV, man. Now, get me into the um, passion, I would like to say. Where did the passion come from for you with camera work and all that? Man, see, uh, I mean, as you remember, like you said, we went to high school, as you remember, uh, you know, all my whole life was football, basketball, you feel me? Like, I played sports. So um, I went to Central State. Uh, I was up there playing football, uh, you know, grinding, doing what I do. I still didn't know what I wanted to do. Like, I was undecided as a for my major. So I just, you know, I was up there doing it. So um, playing football one day, getting ready before our first game. Uh, I was stretching. We were doing like karaoke, you know, the stretch before you uh, for the game. Yeah. You know, I was doing my shit, and then, bro, I did a karaoke. Bro, I tore my ACL, dislocated my kneecap, uh, MCL, like sprained Damn. from doing karaoke. So then, you know, I was in the, I was in the dorm, I was depressed. It's kind of like, like I don't know what I want to do. So 
I was taking this uh, photography one-on-one class, and uh, just like a prereq kind of thing, just to get some more credits kind of thing. So um, I was taking pictures, and my friend, my best friend named Sean, so you know he was uh, he had a, he had the newest iPhone at the time. I think it was like the <laughs> iPhone six, iPhone seven. So I used to okay. be saying, let me see your, let me see your phone, let me take some pictures. Boom, boom, boom. I'm taking pictures. Wah, wah, wah. So um, you know I'm like it kind of that passion. It then start growing. I'm like now I kind of like this, like taking pictures, just seeing, looking at it. The, then I can hang this picture up, and then I'm like, damn, I remember I took that. So it was like that. Yeah. And then um, so my like I, I got a torn ACL. You feel me? I ain't. I'm not doing nothing. I'm just chilling. So I went. I went to a pawn shop over in like Norwood. I bought a camera for like seventy five dollars. So I bought the okay. camera and then I came back to uh, school the next semester. Was taking pictures for all the while. So then I'm like, you know, then I start thinking. I'm like, damn, I can I can make some money, like, cause then you know, like everybody was going to parties and they always ask, yeah. like, can you take my picture before we go to the party? So I'm like, you know what? Yeah, like I'm gonna take some pictures. But then I'm like, you know what? And then I was charging like five dollars, bro. I'm like, give me five dollars to take your pictures before you, you go, go to the go to the party. So then I'm taking the pictures. And at this time, it's like when I was at school with Central, I wasn't on scholarship yet. I was uh, basically a walk on. So okay. um, when I'm taking, you know, I'm taking pictures. Then I'm starting to realize like I'm in school, but I'm not even playing football for one because I'm hurt. So I got to play, pay more money like to the school and I don't even want to be here like being honest mm -hmm. I just want I came to school to play football like it sounds bad right. but I was there to play football that's it not, that's and I you know I kind of don't like I ain't like that mindset because you know you got to have a plan plan a plan b right. and c so um you know I was uh there I was just kind of like you know not knowing what to do so then I was sitting in my room I told my man so I'm like bro I need to, I want to start doing this shit like he, he was so on like you take pictures do this do this do that like, you can even do videos. He was just so high. He mm -hmm. still think highly of me to this day. So then, you know, I'm like, shit. So I'm standing in the room listening to music, shit, just like, because I can't do nothing. So yeah. I come up with the, the name, The Come Up. And I'm just thinking, like, I'm going to come up from nothing. Like, I'm going to come up. I'm in this dorm room fucked up, but I'm going to come up. I had ramen noodles and shit, and I ain't had no food. So it's like, I'm going to come up. <laughs> so that's where that, that's where that, the Come Up Productions came from, kind of thing. That's like, Shit, so then I start taking pictures. Then after that, I left. Like, I dropped, dropped my classes. I went back to the crib. Then I just kind of was taking pictures like that. Then I was working little, you know, little jobs and shit, just trying to, like, yeah, build up the up. photography business. So yeah. then I'm like, you know, I'm just trying to invest. So I invested. I bought another camera. I bought a Canon T3i. I think that was, okay. like, $400. So, you know, I started with $75. Then I got a Canon. Then exactly. I'm like, damn, okay. Right. Hear, hear so that audience. Start, you hear the come up literally in the story. Right. I'm listening. Right. So Go you ahead. feel me? Like, people people starting to pay attention now. So I'm like, I made an Instagram. I mean, you feel me? I'm reaching out, trying to just take pictures and shit. So I'm like, I don't know. I think I got a chance. Like, there's something different. It made, it made me open my eyes to something different other than football. And it made me like, because one thing I didn't have was like communication skills. Like, you know, from my high school, I was quiet. I just kind of, yeah. Yeah, I think everybody knew who I was, but, you know, I just kind of yeah. stayed back. So I think that also, you feel me, like, the higher-ups, God, they put you in a different position to, like, adapt and try to, to get where you want to be. Because I used to always say, like, I want to be in the NFL. I want to, But now it's like, now I got a chance to be in the NFL, but a different way, taking pictures <laughs> for the people in the NFL. So yeah, man. that's, like, that's, that's a dream I'm working on right now, okay. connecting with people. Yeah. That's dope, bro. I'm, 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 I'm looking forward to seeing that, and I definitely can see that in you, bro. Just for the fact of a passionate person that you are. Um, right. I'm listening to your story as you explain it, man, and it's, it's interesting to say this. Some people don't know how to rebound in those type of situations, you know. And with you being an athlete, that helps out so much more in life. Athletes right. have a, um, a cheat code, I like to say, where it comes with yeah. being coached at an early age. To right. where you get a you get equipped with the life's ups and downs. So right. say the guy who probably never played sports in a day in his life, and I'm not judging that kind of person, but I'm just saying, right. say that guy had the same situation you had. Who knows how he would have rebounded if he would have tore his ACL all right. that in just one setting. You know what I'm saying? And right. his whole, you know what I'm saying? His whole dreams is gone in that one moment. Cause bro, I'm not gonna lie. I remember you. You had a fucking cannon, bro. You you definitely <laughs> had NFL talent for sure. So yeah, right. you was uh, you was definitely there. 
But it's okay for you to have that mind state to still say, you know what, I'm still going to be in the NFL. But it may not be in this situation. It may not be what right. I actually thought it was going to be. But look right. how, like you said, look how the higher ups work in your favor. And he did right. that because you didn't give up by pop, like, you know, you know what I'm saying, just sitting in the, the war rules of your situation, being like, damn, right. I can't play no more. So I'm proud of you, yeah. bro. That's big ups for you for I that, man. I appreciate that for sure. That, yeah, man. That's a that's a blessing to even have that type of mind state, bro. Because some people ain't even – some people can't have it, bro. But right. I'm glad you do, bro. For real. Let's move along, though. Because yeah. I, I, I got something in common with you as well, man. Uh, being a, a new father, tell me how that is to you. If, just because you can give me some advice. I'm a – I'm a father of a son, but you're a father of a daughter. That matures right. a man, man in different aspects that I might not know about. I wish I could, you know what I'm saying, get that right. one day. Tell me, man, what has been a couple of things your daughter has taught you already in just like a month that she's been here, right? Right, yeah. <laughs> well, first, I'm going to say congratulations on more life. Like, that, that's, yeah. the big, that's the biggest blessing. But yeah. um, you said three things. Yeah. I say, one, she definitely taught me patience, like, she taught me more on like being patient and figuring out basically like a like a puzzle like a uh, yeah like a puzzle like you got to put the pieces in and you know you got to be patient see when the next where the next piece at chess yeah. those type of things so she taught me definitely patience um, she definitely taught me shit like providing protecting even stronger like because at first like before I had a child my main my main goals was just to provide and protect for my sisters like so then it just kind of showed mm -hmm. me a different way of like pr pr protecting and knowing somebody's really depending on you because like at the end of the day my sisters they still got their mom and daddy just they can provide for them but now it's right. like this little girl right here i got she depending mm -hmm. on me i can't give up. I can't, yeah i can't i can't fuck up not one time i gotta <laughs> you feel i gotta yep. keep going and then um yep. she she taught me a different, like, a different love, bro. Like, okay. So, like, I love I love her mom to death. But it's like, when I when I finally hold her from the first time, it's like a different feeling, like, damn, like, hold on, like, how can I love you on the first day more than I love dinner myself? <laughs> like, I, like, so it taught me, like, you know, it's like the love that, you know, the, I don't, it's the patience for real. That's the biggest, like, just being patient, cause, and that ties back into my business. Like, cause you gotta be patient for Facts. for it to go. Like, it ain't gonna work if you trying to rush the shit and trying to hurry up and okay, let me sign the nah. You gotta be patient. You gotta be strategic. You gotta Tell figure again, out exactly. Man. Yeah, you gotta figure out exactly <laughs> how you how you do it. That's beautiful, bro. I'm trying to tell you, man. Let them know just for the audience, man. How old are you? Man, I just turned 25, uh, January 17th. Hey, man. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, bro. It's a, this is young OGs in the game, man. It's so <laughs> crazy. I feel I see a lot more young OGs in the game because it's not just for having the kid. You you already been kind of like this too. I, I can say that, and it's just in just from knowing you. So this stuff right here is nothing like new, but it's like it's just crazy when people go forward with their, their passion, bro. Like people gotta yeah. understand that, man. Now help me out with this, bro, because. As you as you are part of the show, man, you definitely seen the show. I'm a stoner. I I like to go off the wall right. with my guests. So I'm a I'm gonna ask you some random questions just yeah. just to keep the light, keep the moment going. Just to right. real quick, man. What was your all time or who was your all time favorite quarterback? I remember you playing QB. So what was your favorite right. or who was your favorite quarterback of all time? Man, um, my favorite all time quarterback. It probably was Cam Newton, and it wasn't even just for football. It was more how he expressed himself and how he okay. fashioned and You feel me? Like, how he always want to help. That was kind of – I think that's the reason I kind of – like, he kind of, you know, helped mold me with the with the rest of the people because, you know, it takes a village to build somebody. So, like, okay. even though I ain't never met this man a day in my life, but just, <laughs> just watching on YouTube and seeing, like, the adversity he went through and how he got kicked out of college and, you know, shit like that. So, uh -huh. that – you feel me? The way he played the game, he do it his way kind of thing. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so. then. You know I'm fucking with that because I'm, I'm probably like the only Patriot fan niggas really fuck with. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, bro? Right. Hey, we trying, hey, we trying to get us one this year, dog. He became a contender, like, for sure. The tight ends hey. they just brought in, they hey. some ballers. Yeah. Looking nice now. Looking nice now. Yeah. Okay. Let's stay, let's stay with football for a second. 
Um, I had somebody actually hold on real quick. My pair, my AirPod going out. I had somebody um, actually. She, um, they had hit me up on Twitter about this one. So I, they was like, "Yo, man, ask him who is his all time three favorite wideouts now and ever." So like, who are your favorite wideouts like playing right now and like right. your goat wideouts? Um, three, three favorite. Uh, I like. I like Jerry Judy, uh, okay. over here at Denver. Yeah, I like I like his, his style. Um, who else? I like I like um, Devonte Adams. Hard. Yeah. Um, so now I have to say, let me see one more. Well, oh, that's a little tricky. Um, <laughs> damn. Let me see. Let me see. I it's pro it's probably. Jeez, I I gotta go with Mike Evans. Mike, okay, yeah, that's a good, yeah. that's a nice list. Okay, and then that's like, right now, you know, right? You know, all time favorite. Um, like my all time favorite is Chad Ocho Singer. Chad Ocho, yeah, that's hey. that's my favorite. Then I say after that, I I like I used to like uh, Megatron uh, a lot. Calvin, okay, yeah, Calvin, and then um, last but not least. Uh, Deshaun Jackson, DJ. Yeah. Hey, man, man. People don't know, bro. Still, bro. I think my favorite play of all time, bro, was when he dropped the fumble. You no, know, he dropped the uh, the, you <laughs> the know punt. what I'm saying? He dropped the, the punt, punt yep. and still ran that bitch back, bro. And won right. the game. That's when I be, that's really when I became a fan. And I know it's like I know people probably listen like, man, that's still the younger generation. You gotta go back, but that's really when I started paying attention to football. Kind of hey. thing. Like, yeah, I was right. saying, you just told y'all he's 25. I mean, come on, man. Like, that, that's 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 right. right for your age, dog. Nah, I feel right. you. Hey, then Chad, a real nigga, dog, at the end of the day. I don't know. You right. you definitely from Cincy, bro. So you probably not seen this nigga in uh, Kroger one day or the outside hey, one day. Chad, Chad bought me McDonald's when I was little. Like, <laughs> sort of guy, what? Yeah, so the guy was, we was at a gas station, bro. He asked me, it was me and a couple of my friends from football. He asked me, like, Y'all hungry? And you know how the, uh, the gas stations, they be connected to the McDonald's? Yeah. He bought us all, he bought us all something to eat. And I, every hey. day, I'm like, bro, eat my favorite ever. Hey, bro. Hey, Chad, real one. I can believe that. Right. To this day, he still talk about McDonald's like every right. day. Like, you know what I'm saying, bro? Like, right. And then, was, uh, matter of fact, we was um at the McDonald's in North College Hill. Uh, I know exactly what you about on that corner. Yep. Can I get that yep. Shell gas station? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about, dog. Hell yeah, yeah. It's so yeah, crazy. Chad a real nigga, bro. I feel like yeah. I, I need to start bringing this back up on the show because I never thought about it. I need to ask everybody who originally from Cincinnati, hey, when, did, when was your moment when you met Chad Ocho Senko? Because everybody yeah, right. fucking did. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. bro, my, mine was goddamn in front of the uh, Waffle House in Covington, bro. He's standing for outside real? before his, bro, I swear, 3 o'clock in the morning, <laughs> bro. I just finished doing some lift rides. I'm about to go right. inside and take a piss, bro. He right there, standing outside in front of three of his homies smoking a cigar. I'm like, is that Chad? Right. He's like, oh, yo, what's up, homie? I'm like, yeah, right. damn, bro. They're like, just chilling, bro. <laughs> this is recent, like two, three years right. ago. Oh, but yeah. yeah, man. Let's keep it going. Got some more high questions. Nick Cannon is a GOAT to me just because he puts a lot of people on that look just like us, a lot of black right. people. So, like, what was your all-time greatest Nick Cannon movie? Now, he has a lot of terrible movies, and we all know that. But what was your <laughs> right. greatest Nick Cannon movie? Man, I ain't got, you already know Drumline. Hey. Drumline. Yeah, that's my favorite, bro. Do. Yeah, Drumline. I already do. Fighter the Bumblebee. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> like, man, what the hell are you playing, bro? Right. <laughs> oh, my God. The Soldier Boy, was Soldier Boy's best song crank that to you? Um, These are all Twitter questions. Let me see. Crank it. It, it was the one to put him on for sure. Um, That's facts. I'm trying to think. A lot of people don't. I don't know if people know, but my favorite soldier song was that. Um, put some D's on it. Just brought it, and then um, he was like, put, uh, all F's took it to the teacher desk. Throw some D's on it. I don't know if you remember that. Hold on. That's if you're talking about throw some D's. That's rich boy. But if you talking about the other one, I think I know you talking about the other one that he sampled. I just cannot think of the yeah, name. Yeah, the one bro. he sampled. The one he sampled. I know sampled. exactly what you talking about, bro. Yeah. I can't think of the name, but goddamn, if I'm. And I'm I'm a, I used to TV. like that uh, Marco Polo. I used to like that. that. Okay, did yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> you know, Soldier Boy put a lot of people on too, bro, and produced right. a lot of big hits that niggas don't really know about. Right. But shit. Let's get back into it, man. Your life is actually kind of amazing, bro. Not gonna say kind of. It pretty is. It really is amazing. I and I think that it. you should have like a. Uh, you should definitely get like a documentary series on Netflix going one day for the fact that. People, if y'all don't know, I'm talking to a miracle right now, bro. And my line, you sent me this now. This is not a lot. This is the facts. You sent me this, bro. You were living in a hotel, like, as far as, like, a year ago? Right. Is yeah. that facts? Tell me how. Facts. Bro, okay. Because I know this is going to be motivational. How yeah. How did this How did this come about, bro? Man, so this, uh, this all ties back into, like, when I came home from school and I got kicked out, like, out of school and then I was back. At the crib, so I, I uh, like my I found I found a lady. She was my sister friend. So, um, bro, we was we was living at her place. Then you know things happened as far as like the management. So we had to at the crib. So I, I uh, like my I found I found a lady. She was my sister friend. So, um, bro, we was we was living at her place. Then you know things happened as far as like the management. So we had to find somewhere else to stay. So, you know, it was supposed to be like a temporary thing and then kind of like, you know, finding, you know, a place to stay. So it's like every time it's like something came up and that's the higher ups, you know, was putting us in a position to be at where we at now. So it was kind of more like, damn, like, and we would look up and it was like, damn, it's like month eight and we still here. Like, mm -hmm. we stand in the rear roof and shit. And so it was like, but we were still, I don't know, it was like a reason for everything because we were still able to like do our business and I think it was just more like we had to focus on this part and then once you focus on this part the higher ups was gonna give you a position put you in a position that you need to be because it was like bro it was many nights of like just kind of question like damn can I be here or should I just go back to my mama house but it's like I can't even, I can't give up on on my lady like I can't let her just yeah. see like oh no nah, I got an easier route out so I'm just go back so it was like that was more too I just had to Tough and I feel like it was gonna make me a man. It was gonna make me who I am, and I didn't know the I didn't know the end result. I didn't know like what was gonna happen, but I just kept saying like it's some some definitely gonna happen. Then as well, that's when you feel me. We found out that we was gonna have a child, so it's like oh, uh, you feel me. Everything is for a reason. Mm -hmm. So you know, I, I never understood it, but it was like it was many nights. You feel me? Like I had to. You got to do what you got to do. You got to keep providing. Keep 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 going i was doing like instacart doordash and yeah i was doing that just trying to so i could pay the room so we could pay the room so we can because you know my lady she do hair so she was doing her clients but it was just yeah. like you know we couldn't you know and then being self-employed you don't have paste you don't have check stubs yeah and then sometimes and you gotta wait if you're trying to find like a private owner you gotta wait to them tenants out the house so that was another thing so it was like and probably like I can't. It was matter of fact, it was coming up on a year. I just I don't know what what kind of got it to me. I was sitting there on the phone talking to my sister because she she uh was trying to figure out her journey, and I just said I'm like, really, you gotta get this shit like with life, everything. You gotta give it all you got every day. Back. And it was like yeah. one day I was um uh, I told myself I was just sitting there I was doing Instacart. I'm like, bro, I'm about to get this shit all I got for seven days and see what happened. So then, like, you know, every day I was going hard, making 150, 250 a day. And just, like, hey. you feel me trying to – just seeing how it was going to happen, like, just seeing if I believed in myself and believed in what I was preaching. So mm -hmm. I did that literally that Sunday. I did the seven days on the Sunday. I had got a message. You know, I was reaching out to people. I got a message from them where the house we at now. Uh, a message like, hey, we, um, we got uh, an opening. You want to – and I just kind of think, like, damn, it's – like, it's because I gave all I got, and I showed the higher-ups what, like, you feel me? I'm I'm here for this. I'm ready yeah. to provide and protect. So it was like, he blessed me. He wanted to see, like, are you capable of giving it all you got every day? Like, mm -hmm. so it was like, that's kind of how that, you know, that's how that went. And then we was able to get in the house within, like, the week after that kind of thing. You stood the test of time, man. That's, right. that's beautiful, bro. That's amazing. Like, it was just, again, it was like, and like I said, I feel like my daughter taught me patience. She was teaching me patience before I, she even got here. It was yeah. teaching me like you got to stay patient because you know, like when you seeing the same four walls, the same color of the carpet scheme, like that should play with your mind. You be yeah. depressed and you be like 
small arguments for no reason. But it was like, you know what, I got to be stronger than that because that's just a feeling. So I'm just going to see how I can elevate, be higher, and make it happen. That was kind of – so that's kind of how that happened, bro. That, bro, this is going to be amazing when you – when you look back at this like 10, 15 years ago and you see all the ventures that you're just going to take off because you like right. walk by faith with some stuff, you're going to be proud right. about this shit, man. Because right. when I was talking about in the intro, I didn't want to just consider you as a photographer. Right. Uh, I called you an entrepreneur. And that's right. just a person that got more than one venture, dog. And I feel like that's something you do taking part of being in photography. Right. I don't care if nobody say you can have a messed up leg or not. I seen this boy throw goddamn 60 yards in 2013. So, like, right. I still think he could still do some shit like that. I think right. that, just being honest, bro, um, with your filmmaking, you said you went to school for that, correct? Yeah, yeah. I, went, man. I graduated for filmmaking. Yeah. Congrats. Yeah, man. I, I, and it ain't even no knock on people who don't do it or not, but it's like, you didn't even have, I'm not saying you didn't have to go to school for that. It's just a natural right. talent in people right. to see something like that for the way that you capture these moments. And but, I ain't gonna lie, like, I, you know, I got I got that paper to say, like, you know, I'm a certified filmmaker, but I'm hey. feeling like sometimes, like, I ain't, you feel, I ain't need to do, I ain't, but I felt like <laughs> at that time, that was the best thing to do. That was, like, try to yep. network. And it, it actually was because one of my teachers, he was one of the cameramen for, um, his name Tony Deemer. He was the he was a cameraman for Final. I mean for um, Fast and Furious Six. Wow. So yeah, That's so <laughs> like I had um you know I you know I was telling him my story then before all the stuff had happened like even staying in the hotel shit I was telling him my story leading up to where you know when I met him that time period and he was yeah, just kind of yeah. like you know what like he brought me to his house bro this man. <laughs> got a big ass house. He brought me to his house, bro. Hey. He gave me like I ain't gonna lie. He gave me like probably three thousand dollars worth of equipment because he just seen the passion. He was like, you know what? Here, I'm gonna give you this audio equipment. I'm gonna give you this this lens for. I'm gonna give you like he was just kind of like I want you to be in a position. Man. So I'm like, damn, like you feel me? So everything happened for a reason, you know? Because I still yeah, was thinking yeah. like, man, what's the point of me even going to school? But you feel me? I network and met people, and I can still call exactly. him to this day. I be sending him my work. Like when I get done doing for clients' thing, I send him my work and tell him, like, "What What you think I need to fix on this?" And this man is mo shooting movies. Like he's actually yeah, shooting a movie right now in Washington D.C. So it's like he okay. ain't got time, but he making time just to view my four minute video. He's like, you know what? Add this, add this. So it's, it it was all for a reason. It definitely for you a need reason. that. That's beautiful, man. That's definitely a beautiful thing, man. Hey, man, this is so crazy, too, as well, with you taking up uh, being in photography. Um, you also have now taken up rapping, am I correct? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. man, I just, yep. Yeah. Now, we're going to have to talk about it now, because in, in, in up and coming, I guess, is it going to be the inaugural mixtape that's about to be coming up soon? The, the first yep. ever? Okay. Yep, yep, the first inaugural mixtape. It's, it's called Drop the... Dropped the camera, picked up a mic. That's a great name. That's what I was about to say. Like, <laughs> that's a name where people are gonna be like, "Well, damn, he, this dude does more than one thing." Now, right. what made you go ahead on and just say, "You know what, fuck it, let's go on right there with that type of title." What made you entitled that? So, um, what made me entitled that just really kind of ties back into like my past and my, you know, the life I'm heading to now. So it was like, you know, my past. I used to like when I was in the dorm, I would write poetry just kind of okay. you know like expressing my thoughts and stuff like that and uh it really you know the what ignited it bro was like my uncle he passed away uh yeah. like seven days before Sorry, my yeah, birthday yeah he passed away like seven days before my birthday and i was living we was living in a hotel at the time so it's like this whole time i he been in my life every you feel me every day and I never knew he made music. Like, I never knew that. He ain't never, mm. you know, I knew he used to make beats and shit like that. So then one day, like, you know, when he, he was gone, laid to rest, like, people was posting his mixtape. I don't get the thing. I'm, I listen mm. to it, and I'm just kind of thinking, like, damn. And then his mixtape, he just expressing himself. So I feel like that's another way I can, like, grieve is to, like, tell people how I feel over, mm. over some ba like, over a bass. So that was like, that was another reason, like, I'm going to put the camera down because there's a lot of people 
they know I'm a cameraman, but they don't know the story of why I'm a cameraman. They don't. So that's another like in, in the in the album. I got features with everybody in Cincinnati. I ain't just on some you know solo. I just okay. want because and then that's another thing from the come up. I want people. I, I want people to get out of Cincinnati. So once I okay. leave and once I'm take my pictures, they gonna hear this person. They gonna be like, who is this? And that's just another form of me helping, giving out. So that that comes that came in. That was the title too. Like I'm gonna put this camera down so people can see me and know who I am as a person. Because there's a lot of people like he seen me like he be he six two black like. Mm-hmm. They don't know who I am. They just think they don't know that I, I yeah. crack jokes. I, I'm funny. I, I like yeah. be silly. They don't. So that was another thing. I just wanted to tell my story, you know, along with like family issues and you feel like just uh being backstabbed and you know shit not mm-hmm. going as planned. All the way from Lachlan, like yeah. that was just a, it's just me expressing myself, trying to see let people hear me over okay. um. Over a bass, bro. It's just more because some people ain't gonna listen if you just talk to them like that beat, and then oh, okay, damn, what are you talking about? And then you, yeah. then you get the smoking and you listen, you like, damn, what mm-hmm. is he? Okay, so that's exactly. that was the main that was the main reasoning. So that drop, put down them, put down the camera, picked up a mic. So that's just to express myself. This is dope, and it's gonna be cool. I can't wait for that to come out, man. I'm gonna be definitely bumping that shit, man. It's true. <laughs> when we look back at life, man. Uh, um, shout out to the guy that first told me about this this quote. I interviewed him a couple of years ago. I'm the president. He says everything is documented now, right. and you actually are making that your goal to make sure that's a fact. Make sure that right. what we are seeing, like the most mem- memorable moments, we never forget. You know, some right. people actually have time where they do forget, and um, right. that, that sucks. But you know, one thing I do like about your craft, man, you uh you show real true passion in it and it's not even just involving with you like i'm um, going through your instagram man and it's amazing seeing how you worked with just about every type of person like we're not just talking right. about a white person we're not just talking about a black person we're not talking about a skinny person a tall person you know what i'm saying you work right. with anybody and you make them look i'm just gonna call it bro you make them look great bro that's a dope yeah. way of putting it man and that's yeah, bro, that's that's a good way. I, I, I'm going to be honest with you now. I'm going to have to give me some family photos now. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, love one sure. you know I got you. You know I yeah. got you. Yeah, yeah. I'm going I'm to pay the full price. I'm, I ain't one of these niggas that's going to be asking for half. I'm not, bro. I'm oh, paying man, full price real. because I need that shit, bro. The way right. that you do this shit is dope. Now, help me out with this. Answer this for me. What was your favorite? Like, have you had a favorite? I don't know if this is a biased thing that you should answer, but I just want to know for being yeah. curious. Did you have a favorite shoot of all time, your personal favorite of all time? Um, nah, I actually do, bro. Um, I went to me, I went to Miami um, back in October. And um, so, you know, I'm DMing people trying to just shoot while I'm on vacation kind of thing. And then it's uh, one of the, the founders of a modeling company she DM me back like, yeah, we having a street meet. Uh, all the photographers, it's a private, uh, private kind of party. Basically, you, you, if you get an invite, you can come take pictures. So she talking okay. like one of the photog- one of the photographers from uh, Italy, he can't make it. His flight deli- delayed, so you can get his spot. So you know, I come in, boom. Damn. It's in on on my page. You know, uh, you probably you probably can tell which one from like that Miami vibe. Yeah, so, I think I know you're talking so, about. Right, so I'm like, I'm in there with a whole bunch of women and other photographers at higher places, and you know, I'm in there with one camera, one light. Every auto photographer, they got thousands of dollars <laughs> equipment. So I'm just kind of that was like a good, that was a good experience to see. Like, damn, this this the life I can really live just on a private. You feel me? These photographers yeah, yeah. get paid, they get paid top dollars to come in here and, and take pictures of people. So I'm like, damn, I can't. This is what I can really be on this where this where my life is headed so that was that i can say that probably my favorite because i networked a lot and that's that's the reason why i'm moving to miami like i got a you know position yeah. there yeah so that was okay i say that yeah you know i was just about to get there man that's so crazy you get in the hey that's <laughs> dope bro now go ahead the position is going to be in Miami, Florida, man. Congratulations, bro. Appreciate when it's going to be on YouTube, I'm going to have a little applause like they be having on Martin whenever it's like a oh, yeah, moment yeah. in the background. So, bro. yeah, bro, that's, that's going to be dope, bro. <laughs> now, so, help me out. What the position is like a full-time uh, photography act that you're going to be going up on, man. That's right. that's, that's what we're so talking about. Okay. Uh, it's, a, it's a company. 
she uh, her name is uh, Luna. The place is called Luna Models. So they like okay. they put they they put models in positions to be like they just had they they girls on like Pooh Shiesty music video and uh, just yeah, put yeah. them in different positions like coming up. So that was uh you know and she's the one who invited me. She personally DM me like yeah come to the shoot. I just looked at your page. Wah wah wah. So I'm gonna be working with them. Uh, you know taking Dang. pictures for when they you know when. Cause uh, they just yesterday I was uh, talking to him and Gucci Mane was at their studio doing one of his videos and he wow. had, he hired their girls to basically dance in a in a video so <laughs> that's, yeah so that's the that's the position I'm being in. man yeah. congratulations man I'm smiling from ear to ear because hey, yeah. it's so funny it's bro I, I had the same feeling like I had when I was interviewing Mama Do and my boy Omar who is if he's still in the live what's up dog because we yeah, came up, up from. Bro? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and y'all know it, bruh. For the people who went to Lachlan, bruh, I wore the colors just for this moment. Bruh, that place had 50 people when I graduated. Right. There's not, it's not that many people doing, not saying it's a bad stamp. There's not that many people right. that come out of Lachlan that do that much of anything. And you know what right. I'm talking about, bruh. So, and it's crazy. Really... It's crazy. I got like a love hate with, with Lachlan. Me too. Just Me like, too. Just like the position it. <laughs> But it, it and I and I can honestly say I'm thankful because it made me stronger, made me be able to climb myself out of positions like just all the you know the shit I I went through at that school transferring from Wynn Woods yeah. going to Lachlan. You feel me? That it was a whole you know a getting that's a culture to, shock, right? Right. So you know to put in know, perspective for the audience, it's like for put in perspective, it's like going to like. Uh, it's like going from coming to America, basically. It's like right. what they did, what <laughs> Simi did. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like my right. man was, he was at the top. <laughs> he ended up going to Harlem. But yeah, right. bro. <laughs> and it's That's crazy true. because it, it puts you in a position. Like when I was at Wynwood, I ain't really, I ain't know nobody except for black people. But when I got yeah. to Lockham, I met, I met Africans, I met Mexicans. You right. feel me? So then, you know that, that also helped me because. And when I'm in Miami and Jamaican food, you feel me? I, yeah. I, I kind of know what they talk about just from yep. being around Mama Dude, hearing him talk. Yeah. So it's like, you know, like, I kind of yep. know what that, what Mada is, La Mada. Like, you feel me? So, facts, bro. Yeah, you feel hey. It's a love, hate. <laughs> it's a love, hate. Lachlan culture does. Lachlan culture does, bro. And I, it's so funny. I, I'm 100% agreeable with you on that, bro. I got a love hate relationship with my high school. But shout out to my high school, man. <laughs> man. Oh my God, man! Let's let's keep it going because this is beautiful, man. Um, I'm I, I'm just looking at the notes here, man. We talked about fatherhood, the football dreams. It's still in the works. The 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 best thing that I I look at right now on this, and it's something that I know a lot of my homies they they give me the black for, but I don't care. I'm a guy that look. I do the, I do a weekly show, and I be talking to myself half the time. I don't care right. about anything. I love to express my emotions, and I feel right. like you can do the same thing. When you did the uh, the engagement video, bro, that was beautiful, yes. man. Oh, I, I think the scenery, bro, uh, if I'm not mistaken, kind of know that I found from anywhere. That's at Papa Do's, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. 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 Okay. But that's hard, though. That's hard, man. Go ahead right. and explain that process because, man, it looked like y'all was, I ain't going to hold it. It looked like y'all was goddamn in Atlanta for real, for real. That light was yeah. beautiful, my nigga. <laughs> Go ahead and explain how right. that was going down, man. Well, bro, um... Shit, the reason it kind of I even that I always thought like because you know when is when that person is you know you know that's the person for you yeah and it tied back to like like I said us staying in a hotel this girl didn't give up on me when she could have been like you can't even get your family out of position like you, yeah. she could have gave up for sure so it was like but she stayed there so it was like damn I gotta our, for one you already carrying my child at the moment now so it was like damn i gotta like say i'm thankful i'm like i, I appreciate mm -hmm. everything you've done for me so that was one of the reasons i uh, i wanted to propose and then it was a uh, shit i want to like my pops my my dad uh my friends like even my sisters my female friends i wanted them to see like this is this possible because you know in the black community people ain't really Getting married and proposing. Yeah, you better start preaching. Go ahead. Like, right. I want to so like it ain't it don't take that long to know that you want to be with this person the rest of your life. And you feel me? Everybody got their reasons and uh you don't need to get married. You don't need to get a piece of paper to say you 
mirror, this well, and that. Yeah, yeah. But I was just more like, this is me saying thank you. Cause now we we coming up. We ain't we ain't in the hotel no more. We ain't in, we ain't, you feel me? We ain't gotta fucking yeah. worry about how this and how we gonna do this no more. So it's more like we just saying thank you, thank you. And I just want like I said, I just want to show I want to show my pops like you can you can do this too. I want to show wow. my sisters like when y'all looking for a man, not necessarily look for somebody like me, but you feel me? Somebody's gonna love you and show you love. My friends, I want all my female friends to show like I ain't gotta keep fucking with these fe these mm. niggas that don't want to do this. And then I want to like also with the female friends, my cousins. I wanted them to see like you feel me like you you stick to what you believe in. You you treat your man right. This is the kind of the outcome. Like cause, yeah. like my my lady, she ain't been nothing but you feel me real. Like she kept it real. She made me get mm -hmm. off my ass and get shit. So you feel me? Her doing that and she ain't sugarcoat shit in. Or not communicate and be like, no, nah, I don't want to do this. And she communicated. So yeah. I'm just that was another reason. I want y'all to see how how she moved it to now how she how she uh, a a wife kind of thing. So that was you feel me? I, I did it a little bit for me, but it was more for other everybody else. I want a change in this like in this like in our life and our the people, the stuff we see. I want I want people to see a change. So Thanks, I wanna I wanna at least start it. So now I then like when I did, I've been ha like after that video, I had people like DMing me like, "Bro, I I don't know you, but what you doing? That's uh, that that was real. Like you made me just love my my lady even harder. I had females yeah. like I walk like to this day. I still be having people like, and it actually then picked up more since I dropped that the the vlog of the birth. But I had yeah. people. I walk in, uh, walk in the store. I walk in the rose or something. They be like, "You that person from that." from the proposal that was so sweet i was like yeah that, you feel me that's my that was my goal to let people see other than the people i actually know i wanted yeah. people to see like what i do as long as i keep being me i i, I'm, I can be happy kind of thing so that was, like i said that was my main goal and it you know it's kind of it's working right now so it's like yeah <laughs> yeah that, hey, that was my main goal bro you know man I'm over here cheesing, like I said, from ear to ear, just from the, let me get my joint, man. I gotta, let me get my, let me, let me get my shit together, bro. Cause this is beautiful, man. Serious sure. talk. Uh, what I understand is the same thing, bro. A lot of people in our community, dog, they are um, afraid of commitment. Some right. people nowadays, they look at it like it's shiesty as fuck for the right. government to get involved with a relationship. And, right. um, I don't go that deep with it because I know at the end of the day, I don't even look at it like that. Since I've been married, going on, uh, don't get myself in trouble, Lord. I'm in 2021, yeah. I'm about to be five <laughs> years, you know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> you know, right. I'm there, I had to be quick on the map, bro. But, you know, like, damn, <laughs> bro. Since then, I've matured 10 times better. I look at myself Definitely. as the guy that I wanted to be since I was a kid. Uh, and I'm going to use the term, I've, I've came up too. So shit, you right. know what I'm saying? Like, it's and a that good was, that thing. Was a, that, was a, that was another reason too. Like, of course, like my mom, she she made me, you know, she helped make me into a man, mold me. But when I got my woman, it was more of a, this is the man you you destined to be. Yep. She 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 didn't, she didn't half-ass. She told you, like, she told me in the beginning, like, I want this and this and that. If you can't do this, I can... I don't need no man. I can do this shit my oh, own. Shit. So that and that motivated respect. me, right? So that motivated me to like, you know, what? I gotta be better. I gotta do better, and it just made me into the man I am now. Like to the point where I can do stuff and feel good for being a man, kind of thing. Man, this right here is gonna be great when it go. And uh, I just want a lot of people who are gonna watch this in the future to take heed of what my dog was just saying. Man, it's not no simp shit. It ain't no bullshit. If you got right. somebody that's been down for you since day one, and I'm going to use you for the example that you are because you're on the show. If you got right. somebody that's been with you from the gutter, from the person basically homeless, right. and they ain't complaining, and if they did complain, they didn't leave. Hear right. what I'm saying? You know what I mean? That's somebody that's ride or die, and that term is getting used. It's for played sure. out, but it, it's yeah. definitely something that you should definitely be holding on to, man. People definitely be uh, taking advantage of some shit, man. But, for um... Sure. Let's 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 wrap it up, man. Because this can be this could probably be a two hour pod one day, and I definitely <laughs> want to invite you on the podcast yeah. one day because that's where we definitely I let my hair loose on that one. It's all the right. way unfiltered and way more time. But um, right. 
let, let's let's do this, man. Let's have some fun. Since you are a Cincinnati native, and I've been here about almost 11 years now, second home, we right. use the Cincinnati topics for this game. Uh, right. We're going to play Say That Shit. So basically, the first thing that I say, uh, right. well, the first thing that come out of my mouth, well, you know what I'm saying, the topics come to your mind, you say that shit. So, right. prime example, La Rosa's Pizza. Good as fuck. <laughs> Zippos. <laughs> Delicious. Delicious. <laughs> <laughs> the Cincinnati Bengals. Pathetic. <laughs> I'm a Ravens fan. I'm a Ravens fan. <laughs> <laughs> oh damn. Okay. Hey, yeah. bro, big trust. They they might be doing something this year, man. I ain't they gonna lie. Chance. Hey, okay. What about Queen City Avenue? <laughs> bro, <laughs> but I got I got a story to tell with the Queen City Avenue. Go ahead. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, they, they getting their shit together, so I can say like, be consistent. Bro, so I, I, live on the, <laughs> I live on the west side, bro. I swear to God. My car was down, and I swear it's from the pothole. Like, every day, and like, every every other day, I, I would get a flat tire. I'm like, it don't ever happen on the drive else. But how do I get a flat tire now? So I'm trying to stay, I'm trying to stay off of Queen City, bro. <laughs> Queen City Avenue is, bro, reckless, nigga. Reckless. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh man, I had two more. What else do I had? Oh, oh yeah. The new FC Cincinnati Stadium. I need your opinion on that because it's been it's been a lot of ups and downs out here, a lot. Um a lot of people saying they like it, a lot of people saying they ain't fucking with it. How you feel about it being out there? Oh uh, shit, I, I definitely like it bring like more more views to Cincinnati. Only thing I ain't like is how they they basically took away Taft. Like Bro, they, they destroyed they that shit. Yeah, they moved them, and it's so much land in Cincinnati. I could have put that anywhere else. Yeah, but yeah. that you feel me? I, I like it because it's gonna bring different cultures here, and you can meet different different people, different limelight. So I, I like it from that aspect. But you know, I'm that gentrification kind of thing. That's that's basically what it was. And then yeah, I feel like if they was gonna do something like that. They should have they should have made Tad Football Stadium better than that. They should have they should have get they should have gave them a lot. But shit's backwards. I, 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 overall, overall I, I like it. You know, I like what they doing down in OTR. Uh, I just kind of, okay. I like the whole the vibe. Respect to the game, man. And then, man, I'm a, um, I'm gonna do this thing too. So just because I gotta ask it for the music aspect, when can we be looking forward to that uh, mixtape dropping? I forgot to ask you earlier. Uh, June first. June first. Okay. Uh, yeah, June first. That's the day I leave to go to Miami. So I just okay. want to make like a farewell, like, thank you, Cincinnati. Thank y'all. So that's, you feel me? That's why I'm doing, that's why I'm dropping the June first. That's a poetic date, basically. I get yeah, you. I yeah. get you. Respect, respect. All right, June 1st, I'm going to see. I got, I got my reminder. Copy and paste. Real For talk, sure. dog, man. This For is sure. a great one. I ain't going to lie. I really appreciate uh, this, this, this one, man, because. This brings me back to home with a whole lot of shit, seeing a familiar face. Like, I be telling people, bro, it's cool to, you know, interview people that you don't know. But when you interview people that you know and you went to school with at that, bro, sure. it makes me even more proud to even be doing what I'm doing and seeing what my other homies is doing too, bro. Sure. Now, let's go ahead and end it off because it's Sunday and I got to go ahead and get me another joint in my system, bro. I don't like I know you. I know you need something going on. We're going to end it off on this. Um, you close the show. I always have the guests say the last words. May it be a quote. May it be something inspirational. May it be something funny as fuck. But it could be a fucking story. But like I say, it's a silver view. But the guest is basically the feature of the show. So you closing the right. show out, my guy. You have the floor. Right. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go off with a little like a motivational kind of thing. Um, really, it ain't a quote, but it's my quote. Basically, get this shit all you got every day and i'm telling you you're gonna like the results because the higher ups they bless the people that's this grinded they ain't gonna they're gonna ignore you if you're trying to cheat cheat the system mm -hmm. so if you get it if you get a shit all you got every day you, you ain't got no reason not to win and keep building keep keep grinding every day they see you they might not like your picture they might not like your music they might not share your music. They might not, you feel me? But they see it. Keep going every day. Don't don't stop. Mm. Get this shit all you got, bro. And shit, goddamn, more life. 
Man, that's love, brother, man. Go ahead and do it for YouTube purposes. Let them know where they can find you at on the ads, all socials, and websites, G. For sure. Uh, Instagram is the Come Up Pro Productions. Uh, Facebook, uh, Elijah, the Come Up Cameraman. Um, yeah. Twitter, the Come Up Two Ps. So the Come Up and an Extra P. Uh, YouTube, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. YouTube, um, the Come Up Productions. Um, yeah, that's, that's about that's where all my that's all, all my work at. Hey man, I just want to tell you, dog. I I really do appreciate this time, man. The opportunity. You got a lovely, yeah. lovely family, bro. You got a bright future yeah. ahead of you, my dog. Real talk, man. Stay positive. Yeah. Stay, stay, stay making people happy bro then you don't know how much joy you bring in the world man with pictures dog serious man and a lot I, of people you think they me, and I, I be forgetting i don't notice that all the time so that's and i love the when people come back and they say they say like this 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 gonna last a lifetime so mm -hmm. like so you feel me i can be getting caught up in the moment but <laughs> definitely for sure i'm blessed and i'm thankful that the higher-ups gave me a different vision to see to see where to where to go where to take this Cause that was always that was always my goal was to to that is my goal. I ain't gonna say it like that, but that is my goal is to help other people. And yeah. my bad, I know you're trying to end the show. No, you I, know this is your nah, show, bro. I promise you, I'm doing that for I, you too. <laughs> this live when I first when I first transferred to Lachlan from Winwoods, you, Mamadou, and and Shaq. Y'all was the first three people to kind of like, what's up, bro? Like, boom, boom, boom. Kind of, you know, kind of put me in a, a a different element because I was skeptical about it. It's like, bro, I'm transferred yeah. from a school, this D1 to here. Yeah. But it was more like y'all still made me feel comfortable, <laughs> made me feel like, bro, y'all. And that was just that. I feel like that's another reason that I kind of am who I am. Because of you, like, you kind of, you, that yeah, helping bro. spirit you got. So that made me that that makes me want to put other people on. That makes me want to do an album for the under underground artists to help them see a get a bigger platform to see so other people that I follow that follow me that's at you know six figures they they can yeah. see that and help them. So that was, that's that's my that's my that was, that's my plan just to keep helping everybody as much as I can, like you know without feeling overused but <laughs> but look you going to do that man it's the thing when when people are asking for you and your business and they know that you serious like that lady knew you were serious about your craft in miami man she right. wasn't she wasn't the person who dm'd you you know right. what i mean so this stuff right here is destined for you and the fact that you keep showing your gratitude to the pie he will never forget that bro yeah. just always remember that but yeah joy is always going to continue to get spread as long as there's music uh movies and um i forgot the last thing but it was my grandma she used to say that shit bro so always yeah. remember that you're a part of that man you spread and joy man some people may want to hate on it like you say they may act like they don't see it but how the hell you ain't gonna see no picture <laughs> right right you know yeah, what i mean right <laughs> i look at it like that man but hey this was another silver view my name was sterling silver that is ea it's in the game <laughs> i'm sorry yeah. I, I always do that man <laughs> that's elijah alexander man and we out right. this mug, bro. And you stay safe out there, my dog. For real. My dog, boy, Thank life. You. All praise to the most high. Yes, sir.